Hi everyone, I hope you're having a happy day. Today, I just wanted to quickly go over the new features that Cricut released. One is the new background remover and the other one is the restore brush. So let me get right in it. There's a couple things I wanna mention first. When you open your design space and you look at the application in the upper left-hand corner is your version. So currently we are on 16.14. It does say .267, but the main thing that's important is the 6.14. Now, this update comes out as 6.14. Some of us have it, some of us don't have it yet. But the thing with the new tools is that they're going to be rolling that out in segments over the next two weeks. So you may already have the 6.14 version, but you might not have the tools yet. So just hang tight and be patient. They'll get around to everyone as soon as they can. It's a good way to have a successful rollout is to do it in sections like that. So with that in mind, you will not know if you've been updated until you actually update an image or a photo, and then you would see the tools there. So let me go ahead and get right into it and show you how we use it. So first thing, I'm on my canvas. I'm going to click on Upload. I'm going to click Upload an Image. You can do a JPEG or a PNG. And then I'm going to click Browse, or you can drop the file there. My first one I'm going to select is the Sunflower here. I'm going to go ahead and select Complex. And this is going to give you a good idea. I have a couple different photos to show you how different types of photos might have a different outcome. Okay, so when you get to this screen here, you can see that we still have the Select and Erase, which is what we had before. Now, if you are a Cricut Access member, you will have an image or you will have a, a screen like you see on mine because I am an Access subscriber. If you are not an Access subscriber, you'll have somewhat of a, um, I've seen the screen uh, from Cricut, but to explain it to you, it's kind of like a preview screen. So you'll be able to preview using the remove background. And you'll also have an option to subscribe. If you like using the background tool, you can subscribe right from the application here. And if you qualify for the three 30 day membership, which is completely free, you can use it for 30 days and then you can continue using it or you can just discontinue it. So that's an option as well. So I just wanted to let you know that those are the options there. Now the restore tool you can see right down here under the manual. It's not highlighted yet because I haven't got to it, but the restore tool is for anyone. Now when I say anyone, that's anyone using the desktop application and that's the same thing with the background remover. They're not available for the uh, the Cricut Design Space that's in the application for our phones, our tablets, that is different, okay? With this, the desktop computer, everyone will have access to the restore and the ones who subscribe to access will have the option for the background remover. Okay, so you remember before, if we were to select and then click on a background, right? We wanna say, I say, I wanna keep everything like the sunflower and these two leaves, everything else I want gone. So before we would just hit select and we'd have to keep hitting select and select and select. And you can see that you can't even really get it that close sometimes. And it's spotty and it was very time consuming, okay? So let's go ahead and see what the back, remove background tool will do. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on remove background. And there we go. It takes a lot of that work out for us. Now, the first thing I see are some things that are hanging out and that's okay. This was kind of a confusing picture for the, for the algorithm to pick up on exactly what was in the foreground and what we wanted to get rid of in the background. So there are some photos that you will need to do a little bit of touch out, but definitely better than the amount of touch up that we used to have to do before. So in this case, I'm going to select erase just like before. You can use the eraser size to make your eraser bigger or smaller. And then you just very quickly get rid of what you didn't want. There we go. And that looks pretty good. And then what I would want to do is go ahead and click on restore because if you look here, I always like to use this when I'm 
working on an image because you can see exactly what's going to go into design space by checking your preview cut image. So go ahead and click on that. And I can see right off the bat right here, I need to restore and right here I need to restore. Now what restore does is it puts back the picture that the background remover or the portions of the picture that the background remover actually got rid of for us, right? Maybe it had a hard time with the spot because of the bee that was on there. I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to blame the bees. Okay. I like bees, but anyway, so I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller just so I can go ahead and restore. It's going to put back that stem or the part of the stem that the background remover accidentally removed. And then I can also rub right over the bee here. And let me go back. Looks like I missed a spot right here still. So I'm gonna go back, I'm still on the restore. It looks like it was right around in here. And so that I bet you is probably perfect. Yep, that is good. And that would definitely work for me. If I want to keep that, I would hit comply, apply, sorry, and continue. And you then would choose if you want to keep it as a cut image or a print and cut. And then let's just say I want to print and cut. And then I would click on upload. And this now would be in your recent uploads area. Okay, so let me go ahead and... I'm going to go back to the canvas and let me do another one. So I'm going to click on upload, upload image, browse. This time I just want to do a simple JPEG, something that you're very, very familiar with, especially if you were uploading things like um, something you might get from from a blog that's making images like this and they're giving them away for free or you might find them on Etsy or you might even get them on a site like uh, the Hungry JPEG, Design Bundles, things like that. Creative Market, Creative Fabrica, all those types of designs. Okay, so this is a very simple, simple design. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Background Remover and you can see how easily this took care of this. It even took care of this little tiny part down here. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna revert it back and let's just try the select and see what it would do. Again, I would have to hit each section. And I could try to get in here. Oh, looks like I was able to get it. But that you can see the difference between those two. If I click on preview, it's a perfect image. There's nothing that I need to restore. And then I would hit apply and continue. Click print and cut or whichever one I was doing. And then upload and I would be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my canvas. And now let's do another one. I wanted to show this one to give you kind of an idea of what you might want to do with an image. Oh, let's do the kitty cat first. Okay, so there's my key cat. Hit complex. I just want to show you. Isn't he a cutie? Okay, so then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit background remover. And this is pretty good because you see all these fine lines in here. This is fur. And we know how difficult fur can be. And these are all kind of like-minded colors. They're all earth tones. And we'll see what it does with the background remover. And look at that, that is amazing. Let me hit preview. Absolutely nothing that we would need to do. Again, apply and continue, print and cut, upload. Okay, so let's do this again. Let's go to upload image, browse. This time I want to do granddaughter Maggie. So if we do this, she is in, I'm going to click complex because if you look at this, there's a lot of, we've got fingers that are under the water, part of her foot's under the water. Okay. We want to get rid of this fence, right? I'm going to use it for like a scrapbooking page and show how you can make a really cute scrapbooking image or something for your journal. Okay. So for this one, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to remove the background. So it's only going to be Maggie and her floaty. And then we'll bring in a water image and put them together. And it will be a whole perfect image to use for some type of a craft project or journal or scrapbooking. So I'm going to click on remove background.
Some photos, depending on what's in the photo, might take a little bit longer, so don't be surprised if it lags on some photos. And then also remember that on my blog, which you can link down in the description below, I will have some questions and answers and ideas of what you could use for this. So there's actually going to be more details on my blog if you want to read that. Okay, so this did a really good job. Let me go ahead and hit preview cut. Okay, so it looks like we need to do a little bit here, and I think I might want to do a little bit more to her fingers. Since we're going to be using a water background, I don't have to be so careful about the little bit of water that's like in between her fingers because it's going to be on a water background. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is in order to get the restore, you have to click erase. Just click anywhere on the canvas and then restore highlights. I don't know if that's going to change after the time, but that's how it's going right now. So again, with Restore, you can change your brise, right? You can change it all the way up big, or with here, I wanna do kind of small, maybe a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay, so all I have to worry about is just getting right in between, yeah, I do need it a little bit bigger. What it's going to do is restore what was actually there before. So it, all it does is restore the image prior to removing that background. And then I do want to get to the fingers. So for that, I want to do it a little bit smaller. I want to make Maggie bigger here so I can zoom right in and see her fingers. Okay, so I'm just going to actually I do want it smaller, a little bit smaller. There we go. So I know her fingers are longer there. There we go. We'll just bring them on out just so that it looks a little bit more realistic for the picture. And again, because we're doing a water background, we don't have to worry about if the blue shows, which is convenient for this picture. But you can see how quick this goes. I am loving this restore tool, and especially the background remover. It's such a time saver. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that's the edge of her finger there. She may be a little bit more there. Okay. That does look good. I'm not, again, I'm not worried about any little blue parts that are going to show because we're going to put her right on top of water anyway. So this looks good. Let me zoom back out. Make sure this looks good. Okay, that looks perfect. So let's go ahead and hit apply and continue. And I'm going to do print and cut. It's already named. I'm fine with that. Click upload. And now I'm going to go grab that water image that I have, which is also a JPEG. This one will be super simple. There's nothing that I really have to do with it. Hit apply and continue. Grab it. Okay. So now I'm going to grab both of these items and add to my canvas. And this is just going to be like some fun to show what you can do. Wow, that came in big. So when you see this exclamation mark and darling <laughs> Maggie looking so big right here, the easiest way to get this down to size instead of scrolling and trying to find the size icon is just simply go up to your width and just change it to something like four and hit enter and it brings it back down to size. Okay, so now we have our water, which we do need to make bigger. So let's see, I want to make this about... There we go. I like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. Well, this will be good because I'm thinking of putting it like as if it was going to be in a scrapbook page. Right. So you want to print it almost like a four by six photo. OK, so she's going to go behind whenever that happens. And we're going to be working with this instead of bringing this to the front. Since we're going to be adding other things, possibly it's easier just to send this to the back since I know it will be the back. So I'm going to put Santa back and then bring little Maggie up here. Okay. I'm going to make this bigger just so we can see it better. There.
There we go. Okay, that actually looks so cute. And so let's just go ahead and bring in some fun text. I'm gonna put, let's see. Summer and let's pick our font. Let's do like a, I wanna do a Cricut. I like this one, it's like a berry one. This one, I do love that one. Okay, it's the blueberry pancake one, it's a fun one. And then let me just make this a little bit smaller. This, and then let's also go ahead and add some more text. Let's do the year, right, since it's gonna be like something that we want to remember make that a little bit smaller okay that looks cute I like that okay so let's make this even more fun and instead of just printing this you know even if we were to change the color to a, you know I could try and find a color that maybe matches her bathing suit it's kind of a coral color Kind of, sort of, pinkish coral. Like that would be cute, right? But let's instead, since she's on a mermaid floaty, let me see if I have any patterns, since it's going to be a print and cut anyway. I think it would be a really cute idea. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we'll go to standard print and cut. And then for the color, when you select the color, you change your print type from color to a pattern. And then I'm gonna filter my patterns and see if I can find a variegated, pretty kind of a mermaid-esque type picture or pattern, sorry. Oh, you know what? That's gonna be cute. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Okay. I like that a lot. <laughs> so we'll go back to standard and choose the color, change it from color to pattern, filter it, just makes it quicker to get to some of your patterns. This is kind of like the all the variegation one. So that was down a little bit. And there it is. Oh, yes. Okay, I really, really like that. Okay, so basically, say I'm happy with everything as it is, all I would have to do is select everything and simply hit flatten. And then maybe I look at that and go, you know what, it is kind of hard to see the letters. So I want to make a change, but right, I would have to unflatten it first. I can't change that because it's already flattened into one layer here. So I'm going to hit unflatten. And I'm going to come up here and let's try an offset behind it. Actually, let's offset them both together. So I'm going to hit summer, hold my shift key, hold 2021 and click attach. Now they are one attached together as one. So now I can hit offset. And you can kind of see the line here. That's kind of big. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. We just want enough to make that text stand out just a little bit better. So I want a rounded corner. That's good. I definitely want the offsets welded. So that's perfect. And I'm going to hit apply. All welds come in as black. So we're going to just click off of it and click the black and change it to a white. Oh, that looks so much better. It makes the word pop and it would be perfect for inside of a scrapbook. So now I can take my mouse and just select everything and hit flatten and we are good to go there is our picture that we can use for our scrapbook or journaling turn it into a greeting card you could do all kinds of things i just wanted to give you a quick example of how fun it is to take our photos how to enhance them this picture looks so much better than that fence that's in the background and everything else and you can't even tell because it was put on water 
it doesn't even look like I removed it and put it back in. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know down below if you have any questions and I will be happy to answer them. And then again, on my blog, the link is in the description below. I go over some common question and answers there as well. And there's also a word tutorial if you prefer that style. All right, take care and remember to create with love. Bye.